Hi, Bobcats. In chapter 13, we will explore various facets of solutions. Um, we will start by looking at how intermolecular forces play a role in solubilities. We can make uh, arguments about how the intermolecular forces present in a solute and a solvent will determine whether or not they will dissolve in one another. We will also look at how temperature and pressure affect solubility, and we'll look at something known as colligative properties, which are properties of a solution that are different from the properties of a pure solvent, and those properties depend only on how many particles are dissolved in solution, not the nature of the particles themselves. This is our list of objectives for chapter 13. We'll look at the energy of the solution process and see how intermolecular forces play into that. Uh, we will also look at how temperature and pressure affect solubility. We will use various units of concentration, such as molarity and a new one called molality, percent by mass and mole fraction. And let's see, we will look at colligative properties. These are properties that depend on how much stuff is dissolved in solution. Before we jump too deeply into solutions, I want to make sure that we're straight on some basic vocabulary. You shouldn't expect questions on a quiz or a test that ask you to simply define these terms. But if you don't really understand what these terms mean, you will miss points because you won't be interpreting the questions correctly. So the first cluster of vocabulary words that I want to look at um, consists of solute, solvent, and solution. The solute is the thing that gets dissolved up into the solvent. The solvent is the piece that does the dissolving. So for instance, in this example on this page, the solute will be these blue crystals of copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate. The solvent will be water. And when you mix the solute with the solvent, you'll get the solution or this uh, nice uh, bright blue liquid. Additionally, even though most of the solutions we are going to talk about will consist of a solid dissolved in a liquid, it is possible to have solutions that are made up of all different combinations of states. For instance, the image on this page, the gold rings, represent a solid state solution. Gold is typically not pure, because if your jewelry were made out of pure gold, it would be so soft that the first time you wore it, you'd demolish it. So things like rings are typically about 10 karat gold where the gold is melted and another metal such as silver is mixed in with it. And um, those two metals are alloyed together with one another. Alloy is just another word for a solid state solution. So solutions can be all sorts of states. You can have the alloys, which are a solid and a solid. Um, you can have what we use most often, which is a solid dissolved in a liquid. Um, you can have something like a gas dissolved into a liquid. That would be something like the carbonation that you experience anytime you drink a, a soda. Or you can have gases dissolved in gases. Air is a great example of that. So even though most of this chapter will be spent talking about solutions that are made by dissolving a solid in a liquid, just keep in mind that solutions um, can have so many other possibilities as well. 